Okay, I just thought I'd make a quick video explaining what I've really done so far with this Linux stuff. So, okay, it all started with a Windows update. Just don't let your be. I opened up Windows and what do you know, there was an update. And I also tried to basically get some text writing software, but it turned out to be a virus or whatever. So all the cliche reasons. And then I just decided, okay, I am done with this crap. And I just booted up Linux Mint. Why Linux Mint? Because I heard it was a good, I heard it was an easy distro or whatever. So I just went with it. And yeah, that's, that's the end of Windows, man. That's... And I ain't going back to that crap, I'll say that now. And then I started to dive into LaTeX. This was one of the first things I did. I did this on Windows too. I mostly use LaTeX with VS Cuck. And I understand this is horrible, don't get me wrong, but um, I guess it's better than using LibreOffice. First I started with LibreOffice um, because I was looking for alternatives to Word. It all started with Word, believe it or not. Because Word, if you didn't know, actually charges like a dollar a day, which is just ridiculous. I'm pretty sure there are people in the world who make less than that. <laughs> And yeah, I know VS Code is horrible, but don't get me wrong. Uh, I used it on my Mint setup for a while and made a video on it. And I guess I didn't know about much back then, but this kind of introduced me to Vim as well. Because on VS Code, there is a Vim extension. Yes, this is not Vim itself, but it's a Vim extension. And it got me roughly used to the key bindings. And I'm going to be honest, it was very uncomfortable at the start, but it got me used to the Vim key bindings. Then I tried to learn Kali Linux for a while and then realized I should just focus on learning hacking tools instead. So that was the second distro I downloaded, Kali Linux. So at this one, I was like triple booting three different distros. I had Kali Linux, I had Windows, and then I had Linux Mint. And then this is when the real stuff began. I started to move into Vim. So whatever VS Code setup I had, I ditched all that and I started using Vim. And this is when the paradigm shift started to happen. I did not know Vim had plugins. I did not know Vim had autocomplete. I did not know Vim had like syntax highlighting and all that. And I didn't know it was way faster. This was like amazing, honestly. I don't know how to say this, but Vim is just natural, okay? I cannot fathom using anything else. Fuck. VS Code. Okay, this horrible program, horrible software, extremely bloated, telemetry, yada, don't even, yeah, just disgusting. This was like the major shift in everything. After Vim, I guess this is where the real stuff started to happen. This is also when I got into Vim tech and all that kind of stuff. I learned about Vim Wiki later. I'll talk about that later. And then this is when the real shit began. Although I was still using Linux Mint, I slowly started to use the terminal for everything. And I started to see how efficient it was. And this is when I finally decided to download Minimal Arch. And initially it took a while because of my bad mindset, but then this is when this is when things just started to get better and better. The terminal was basically my most used program at this point. I don't know if you can call it a program, but terminal emulator, that's what they are. Arch has no settings menu, so everything has to be done through that. And then um, I started using this thing called Ranger. Now Ranger is horrible, don't get me wrong, but it introduced me to the idea of managing my files without needing to use some bloated ass mouse centric GUI to do it. Then I started to use LF. LF was also another groundbreaking thing. The custom shell scripts you can do in that is just amazing. I'll post some, some of them in the description. It, it really is good stuff. Then this is where things like VimWiki started along with CalCurse. CalCurse is also amazing. I'll make a video about that later. But VimWiki is basically like this amazing, ridiculously efficient note-taking tool where you can take notes for any subject except mathematics, I guess, because VimWiki can't really do equations. So I guess um, you can either use another note-taking software for that, but yeah, this was one of the best. Then I started to make D-menu shell scripts because in Arch, I would just use a lot of shell scripts to do things. And initially, it is very inefficient, just typing out the shell script all the time. Clicking something is easier. But then I realized, wait, no, there's a thing called D-menu. And that's actually what D-menu is for. It is for basically... You can echo lines into D menu. You can pipe lines into D menu and D menu will select one and you can basically print it out. That is like the, the main use of D menu. And this is useful in making a menu of shell scripts. And yeah, overall, that was uh, pretty much the last thing. I think that's pretty much it. Um, I'd say this transition was actually pretty smooth. Um, the only thing that was wrong about it would be my mindset, I guess. Installing Arch took way longer than it had to. But if you have a good mindset towards it, if you actually read, like here's another thing. People these days don't really know how to read. 
Um, even with studying, if you read the textbook, you can actually understand it, but people don't read it. They kind of like skip it or the manual, the arch manual, for example. If you read the arch wiki, you will understand what to do. It is written pretty clearly and it's not that complicated either. But yeah, um, aside from the mindset, this transition was actually pretty smooth because first I learned Vim on VS Code technically. And then when I got to Vim, it was a lot easier to just go along with it and then i had to configure vim obviously that was new but then that didn't take too long either and then after that i was using the terminal so much at that point that when it came to the arch install um, i mean okay the install was bad but then when i switched to arch everything being done on the terminal and just googling a command and then basically just copy pasting it because you can just that's really how simple it is it is actually pretty simple and then over time you understand the commands and then you do dmenu and then the number one thing i did to make this transition extremely easy it was very long okay if i went back i would have basically done it faster i would have said okay one week on vs code and then one week on vim and then one week on mint and then i'm just chaining you can split it up but so one thing i do is i just go faster maybe i'd skip vs code entirely and the number one tip i would give is you find a minimal false solution to everything and then you change the operating system many people go i want to download arch and then they install arch they install manjaro or whatever just for the cool looking neo fetch and then they just continue doing things exactly the same way instead of using word they use LibreOffice, which i guess is better but it's still the same system the point is to use something better like latex or gnu trough if you want to like the mega elite people that is the point of using things like Arch. It's about changing the programs you use. That's what it's really about. It's not about going to Arch and then doing a virtual machine. And then from the virtual machine, you use things like, like Word or whatever. That's just pointless. You're literally better off using Windows at that point. The point is to switch to a minimal false solution for everything. And yeah, I don't remember the exact time span of all these things, but this is basically the journey I took and these are the steps I took. And it ended up saving me lots of time in the long run because efficiency has amazing returns on investment. So that's pretty much all I did. Um, if you did it faster, I guess roast me in the comments, but yeah, thanks for watching. Stay free and have a nice day.